Yes, if you've just turned in the channel by accident, no, this is not the Sochi Olympics. You're watching the boards and bio briefings right here on Think Tech Hawaii Television. And today, we're privileged to have as our guest, Dr. Richard Alsop, who is a professor at the uh, J.A. Burns School of Medicine. I always have to remember Jap Sum. Mm -hmm. Very good. And uh, we are very privileged to have Dr. Alsop with us because he's going to talk about something that may be of interest to you, longevity. Yes, longevity is a hot topic. Who doesn't want to live longer? And we're going to be talking about his research in a subject called telomeres. No, they're not little crawly things that go around behind the closet. Telomeres are right now well and alive inside you, and we're going to find out what effect they will have on your body, what effect they will have on society, illness, uh, diagnosis, treatment, and prognosis, and fortune telling, and various other things that are much of interest to almost everybody who's watching this show and others who are not watching, and we hope you'll tell them right here. Remember, in Boris's bio briefings, you're hot, we are not. Our guests are definitely hot, and let me introduce Dr. Richard Alsop, and welcome. Pleasure to be here. And let me start off by asking, first of all, a question, what is uh, aging and how does it work in general? Well, a aging is a gradual deterioration of our, our bodily functions uh, at all levels, at the organ level, at the cell level, at the molecule level. And um, uh, this continues on gradually with age and ultimately increases the, the chance, the risk for death as, as we age and um, is uh, what limits our, the uh, lifespan of, of humans as well as uh, most other species on, on the planet. Now, one of the things you hear in common, especially on uh, non-technical or non-biological radio or television, is free radicals. Now, I always thought that, were, that with the demise of the Soviet empire, the, the radical parties are gone. What, what is exactly free radicals? Are they guys running with guns or what? Well, in our bodies, they, uh, they have, they're like little mini guns, little molecular guns that uh, can actually damage other molecules, bigger molecules uh, like DNA, important uh, encoding molecules like that in the body and proteins in the body and uh, uh, s stop them from functioning properly. They can, if there's enough of them, they can even kill the cells in your body. So, so what do exactly do we mean when we talk about oxidative damage? What, do, what does that mean? So what it means is those free radicals, which are generated from oxygen, which uh, and the, one of the main sources of that is the mitochondria, the powerhouses of the cell, uh, they are uh, getting out and they are physically reacting with uh, proteins and DNA in, in the body and chemically bonding and altering the structure and through that the function of, 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 of proteins and DNA and other molecules in the cell. So when we talk now in the popular press, when you hear on late night talk shows, usually about 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, we've got just the lo lotion that's in motion with a potion for curing uh, free radicals roaming around your body. What exactly are these additives or, or food products or, or pills or natural herbs? What are they exactly that people are offering sometimes? Yeah. Um, some of the things are, some of these molecules are in components are uh, vitamins like vitamin E and vitamin C that have been around for a long time and but there's newer and better ones coming out on the mar market all, all, all the time as well. Um, uh, um, I, well is this basically yeah. the theory behind Linus's Pauling's ideas of vitamin C maybe 40, 50 years ago when he got the Nobel Prize? You know, he advocated the heavy use of vitamin C as a, almost a cure-all for everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know if at the, the time they thought it was as good an antioxidant as it, as it turns out that it can be. Mm -hmm. Vitamin E, I think, is even better. But, uh, that, yeah, there's a lot of free radical antioxidants. And there's these enzymes in your body, like superoxide dismutase is one that the body actually makes that can actually quench and soak up these free radicals as they are they're produced. So what you're introducing is basically the idea that your body is probably the best recreation machine for healing the body. Mm, it, it certainly does uh, a pretty good job of that, yes. So, so let me segue right into 
your topic. What are telomeres and what do they do? So telomeres are uh, genetic elements that are at the ends of all chromosomes in a human cell. So there's the human genome is broken up into 92 chromosomes and these are linear pieces of DNA and what the telomere is, it's the very tip of each chromosome that oh. acts as a cap. Let, let me perhaps make that a little clearer to our, our audience with uh, a picture number one there. There you go. So there are the telomeres. Telomeres, I'm sorry. Yeah, so the telomeres are what are lighting up uh, 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 sort of at the feet and the head of, of those chromosomes there. Uh, and they, with age, gradually get shorter and shorter, uh, in particular in cells that divide a lot, like blood cells and uh, skin cells. So, uh, so one of the problems that we're faced with uh, is, as humans is uh, how to uh, uh, counter that process because what happens is, is if the telomere gets too short, then it can't function as a protective cap and this can cause instability in the genome and that can cause um, damage to chromosomes and ultimately it can cause a cell to senesce. Ah. Segways right into my next question. Uh, what is cellular senescence? Cell senescence. It's also known as the Hayflick limit after uh, Len Hayflick, who discovered the, the process in human fibroblasts about 40 years ago, which defines the finite, limited capacity of human, normal human cells to divide. So a normal, a normal human, a cell, a fibroblast, or a skin cell, or blood cell, what have you, most types of human cells uh, can only divide a limited number of times in, 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 in a tissue culture dish, like say 80 or 90 times. And what was discovered about tw uh, 30 years after, 35 years after Len Hayflick's uh, seminal discovery in the 60s is that telomeres gradually shorten as these cells divide in culture. And ultimately what happens is the telomere Loses, loses, there's so much DNA loss from the telomere, it can't function properly as a cap. And that signals the whole senescence pathway. So what senescence refers to is the terminal uh, inability of, of the cell to divide. It can no longer replicate itself. So oh. it's, 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 not, it's not dead, it's not necessarily dead, but it can't make more cells. It can't renew and replenish organs, tissues of the body anymore. So is, is there a natural process or natural additive that used to be uh, perhaps taken previously before we understood the whole, how the whole fun, uh, process works? Was there a natural additive? Was there a herb, a Chinese medicine before that? No. That people really believed in? Uh, that to start senescence? Yeah. No. no. I don't think so. I mean, if there was, I'd be taking it. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> so that's why all the big money is going into this research. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, not for you, of course, but I'm talking about in general. In, yeah, in general. In, in big, big pharma yeah. is yeah. really hot on the trail here. It sure is. sure okay. is, yeah. Well, let me ask you, what uh, characteristics do cells exhibit when telomeres uh, get shorter? I mean, just before the cells reach senescence. Before the cells hit senescence, well, you know, they really don't... They do change a little bit in, in, in their function and things as, as they approach senescence, but it's really that sen transition to senescence where you get profound changes in how the cell can function. It starts, it becomes, one of the things it does is it uh, secretes cytokines from the cell that sort of cause inflammation. And we talked about free radicals. So that can actually cause generation of free radicals, things that you don't want too much of. Uh, uh, within a local microenvironment. So one senescent cell is, is not good, but it actually can have additive effects by secreting these cytokines to all the cells that are in the, the vicinity, the near vicinity of that senescent cell. So one of the biggest boons actually to uh, plastic surgeons is perhaps the decrease in the synthesis of pro-collagen for ladies in the, among our watching audience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and immediately noticeable how would we notice that on uh, someone's face uh well you know it can cause wrinkles ah, the w word <laughs> the w word okay so actually the skin is, is is stretching and looks older goes into folds yeah well, we talked about the cross-linking of proteins and things that free, free radicals can generate and that ultimately can manifest as, as wrinkles. And, you know, it's, 
it's, so, it's something that has to be constantly battled. So the protection for, the, for the cells is gone, and they become then exposed, I guess, to the dehydration effects of the sun and everything else. Well, there's different causes of, mm -hmm. of, of the... Uh, uh, wrinkles. Uh, it's certainly, it's not all due to telomere shortening. I think uh, the older you get, I think the more uh, involved uh, telomere and senescent cells can play. But you know, there's immediate damage from sun. If you get exposed to the sun too much, uh, even at a young age, you might not have a lot of senescent cells. But that can also cause uh, uh, wrinkles in the skin as well. So different, different causes f for the same. Uh, effect. So if you can actually stop the shortening of the telomeres. Will this prevent replicative aging? It will prevent replicative aging. That we've shown to be true uh, in uh, tissue culture and uh, actually in mouse, in mice as well. Uh, so in the tissue culture, you can reactivate an enzyme called telomerase, which functions to stop telomeres from shortening. It replicates telomeres as the cells divide. So it's an important, very important enzyme to have in order to uh, maintain a cell's uh, replicative potential. So stem cells, for example, in the body, which replenish organs uh, uh, daily, uh, you know, as, as, as uh, you know, normal bodily processes go on and cells turn over, these stem cells have, um, often have uh, telomerase in them, whereas other more differentiated cells, like a skin cell, might have, have no detectable telomerase. Now, allow me just to digress for a second. You mm -hmm. mentioned mice. Uh, now, I notice that sometimes some of the proteins get expressed or get used different animals for uh, producing new products, new bacteria, new viruses, new uh, molecules, and so on. Why mice? Well, mice are a great organism to study for aging for a number of reasons. I mean, one, they're really small. They can, you can fit a lot in a, in a, in a cage in, 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 a, in a laboratory environment. So you can, you can have sufficient numbers of these animals to do statistical analysis. The other thing is that, or even more important, is the fact that they have a relatively short lifespan. So they only live about two years or so. And they reproduce relatively quickly to generate more mice uh, for other experiments. So reproduce fast, don't have a long lifespan, so you can study the effects of whatever you want to study on the effect on, on the lifespan. So instead of getting a human expression of the same product, mm. waiting around 70, 80 years for someone to age, you can get something pretty quickly. You can. You can. You're much quicker. But what about the differences in species? Exactly. Uh, so there are limits there as well. I mean, the mice, mice are good. They're, they're mammals, like humans are. Uh, so, you know, they might be a little, something a little bit better than, say, yeast or like a, mm -hmm. a fruit fly, but uh, they, uh, they're still not humans. So, you know, they have a different genetic uh, genome, slightly different than, than humans. They have a different number of chromosomes. Um, but nonetheless, I think there is some relevance there uh, uh, to, to human biology. But whatever you find in mice, that's the first step to indicate that it might have an effect in humans. Then, of course, you need to do the clinical trial in humans to, to make sure that it does. Well, let's hold that thought right there. We're going to take a break to our sponsors. You're watching Boards' as Bio Briefings right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Our guest today, Professor Richard Alsop at the JAB School of Medicine at the University of Hawaii. Castle and Cook, Hawaii. Investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Collateral Analytics. Empowering the real estate industry to make better informed property investment decisions. The Foreign Trade Zone bringing the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone programs to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. Galen Ho, a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, incorporating diverse perspectives to design a flexible and forward-looking energy strategy. Hawaii Energy, the state's energy and efficiency program created to help Hawaii's residents and businesses adopt a clean energy lifestyle. Hawaii Gas, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Hawaii Pacific Health, bringing technology and teamwork together to transform healthcare in Hawaii. The High Tech Development Corporation, attached to DBED, is the state's leading technology agency. The Scheidler Family Foundation, 
supporting educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tank. We're watching you. We hope you didn't go to the refrigerator and pick up some telemaries to <laughs> while we were on a break. Our guest today is Professor Richard Alsop, whose research in uh, telomeres well known, and we are discussing the effects of uh, the telomeres on research into aging and treatment of variety of diseases. And uh, tell me, what is exactly telomeres, Marais? Telomerase. Telomerase. Exactly. So you have the telomere, which we talked about a little right. uh, last time, which is the degenerate cap that caps the ends. Telomerase is the ends is a protein. It's a it's an enzymatic complex, an enzyme that uh, recognizes the telomere, and it has the function to add more telomeric DNA onto the end of the telomere. So it can actually stop the shortening of telomeres, which would otherwise occur as the cells cells divide, because there's a problem that the normal DNA replication machinery has in replicating the end of the telomere. It just can't quite make it all the way to the end. So there's little bits that are left unreplicated in, in, in any cell that divides with no telomerase. If telomerase is, is present because it can extend the, the end of, of, of the telomeric DNA, then uh, it overcomes that problem. Well, uh, can uh, telomeres marais, uh, use as a product to extend uh, the cell lifespan? Uh, act, any, something that could activate, transiently activate telomerase could, could do. Well, can you possibly speculate on uh, other future biomedical applications of this new technology in resetting the telomeres clock? Oh, yeah. Well, there's been a number of diseases that have been associated with mutations in telomerase. Uh, that some are sort of related to aging, some surprisingly uh, not so. For example, lung fibrosis uh, has been shown to be associated with certain mutations in the, to one of the essential components of telomerase called telomerase reverse transcriptase, which is the catalytic component, which is a, a key essential component to the function of telomerase. So if you have mutations in uh, the gene that encodes this telomerase reverse transcriptase, which I will refer to as TERT, acronym called mm -hmm. uh, TERT, T-E-R-T, -E then uh, you are then predisposed to get lung fibrosis. So something which could reactivate telomerase, or the good copy of telomerase that someone might have, uh, it could compensate and uh, prevent, uh, uh, theoretically, the, uh, the uh, 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 deterioration of the lung that's associated with pulmonary fibrosis. So that's one. And then another one is heart disease. Heart disease, which is an age-related process, has been shown to be uh, associated uh, fairly strongly with uh, uh, reduced telomere lengths in the blood. So is it really possible to revert old cells into young cells and once again? Uh... Yeah. Uh, it sure is. I mean, we've done it in tissue culture. You can reactivate telomerase in an old skin cell and it will not senesce. It will stay youthful. It'll keep dividing and dividing. No, but the, the, the question comes, you can look like a 20-year-old, but can you think like a 20-year-old? Or you do think, you want to, really? Can you think like a 20-year-old? Well, <laughs> That uh, may require a different uh, expression of the bacteria or the molecule. It might, it might. Um, uh, I don't know if you necessarily would want to think like a 20-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so yeah. if some aspect of uh, human aging is directly linked to short uh, telomeres, does the gradual shortening of the telomeres coincide with the long-term aging process over a lifetime? Um, it does, and it's been associated, particularly in the tissues and organs in the body that divide a lot, like the intestine, the skin, the blood. Uh, and in the blood, for example, if you take blood samples from a people that are 100 years old, their telomeres are so short in the blood that they are approaching what you find in uh, senescent cells, like a pure homogeneous population of senescent cells. These uh, blood cells from centenarians are verging on the border of becoming senescent. Oh, I see. So, so do you see, do you see uh, a scenario where uh, telomeres can be the Achilles heel of cancer? Well, they, they certainly can uh, maintain, if 
telomerase is, 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 is key in, 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 in cancer and the uh, immor immortalization of cancer cells. So cancer cells are um, typically, not always, but typically they are immortal. They've overcome the senescence checkpoint. They don't senesce uh, because their telomeres don't get too short that they can stop functioning. And the reason that they don't senesce is because telomerase has somehow, in, in about 90% of cancers, been reactivated due to a set of uh, mutations, uh, most of which have yet to, been to, yet to be discovered. But it's nonetheless, it's a rare event, but it, if, if it happens, then that endows the cancer cell with immortalization. Oh, I see. So what you're saying is that if you inhibit the, the, uh, the uh, telomerase, then uh, you can restore the uh, senescence program in the cells? No, once the cell hits senescence, it, it can't be reversed. But if you re if reactivate telomerase before it's senescent, then it won't get senescent. It'll just keep dividing. So you're saying that it's a little more complex to say that we can find a therapy cure for cancer in the uh, telomerase. Oh no, I think that if you could inhibit telomerase in a, in a cancer cell, uh, that it p theoretically could cause the cancer cell to senesce. The interesting thing about cancer cells is that most of them have very short telomeres. So if you just inhibit telomerase for a little while, uh, it'll cause a lot of those cancer cells to senesce. So it, it's, uh, in theory, it's, it's a very uh, uh, logical and uh, sensible way to, to potentially treat uh, uh, cancer. I see. How specific a targeting would you have to be to attack cells like the reproductive cells? So yeah, those are cells that you don't want want to target, in, in, like in the cancer in a cancer therapy. Uh, but uh, uh, we believe that they might be able to bounce back relatively quickly because they have long. In addition to having a lot of telomerase, they also have long telomeres, so they can withstand certainly a short duration of time with with no telomerase. So. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's almost like giving them a lead uh, coat uh, when they're getting exposed to radiation. That's right. For, in, for certain cells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. could there be another substance that could be used as a screen when applying this therapy? Would it have to, would it have to be a two-part or a, uh, a two-step or two-stage kind of treatment if you're trying to imagine what kind of uh, treatments we could invent for cancer using the telomeres? Well, I mean, I think that it certainly would supplement other current therapies for, 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 for cancer. I think a, a multi-pronged approach where you have a telomerase inhibitor type of compound with, for example, another compound that stops the, uh, the spread or the metastasis of a cancer. And then maybe even something else that uh, can um, uh, prevent the uh, growth of blood vessels in a cancer. So, you know, just as an example, you know, these different types of combination of, of treatments, I think, ultimately will work best. To your knowledge, is anybody doing actually clinical trials uh, with telomerase? Well, there's one co company in California called Geron, which has uh, got a, a couple uh, clinical trials ongoing for uh, a telomerase inhibitor compound that they developed. And uh, so they're working hard at it. So this is a basically a totally different approach and has been used till now in uh, cancer treatment in terms of what till now we've been using chemo or radiation therapy or radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. So this is a totally different approach this to radiation. This is a issue. totally different approach, a, a very novel and, and different approach to the treatment of, of, uh, of cancer from yeah, conventional ways. And in terms of envisioning this kind of treatment, is a, in terms of being the patient, mm -hmm what kind of length of time of treatments and what about frequencies? So is anybody talking yet about that type of issue? Um, In terms of the intensity, the length of time, uh, because today we, we tend to talk about uh, tumors and cancers in terms of uh, how advanced, how progressive uh, the mm -hmm. cancer is, how mm -hmm. far spread it is, is it metastasized mm -hmm. or not. When you're looking at telomeres, do right. you view it from the same type of uh, stencil or viewing a uh, yeah. microscope? Well, you know, a lot of factors play into the, to the, the time that it would require to treat the 
a cancer with, say, like a telomerase inhibitor because it's not just about stopping the telomerase and the telomeres are going to start shorten. It's about uh, how accessible the cells are to this, this drug, um, you know, things like that, which could, you know, um, uh, have to be taken into consideration. But uh, uh, it could be, uh, since most cancer cells are... Uh, relatively uh, have short telomeres, it could be uh, as long as it takes for the cell to divide uh, a couple times or maybe even one time with no telomerase, which, you know, if in a rapidly growing cancer is, uh, could be within a, a day or two. It might sound, you know, very strange, I'm going to ask you, what happens if you live your telomere therapy lotion and potion in the closet? Is there a danger to someone in your household accidentally drinking it or? Your you're taking the medication to the telomerase inhibitor. Yeah. Well, uh, well, there's always uh, risks with any uh, therapy, but um, uh, the side effects for you know this type of, of, of compound, uh, uh, just purely based on the biology of the effect of it, which is on telomeres and telomerase, is uh, the cells in the body which have and require telomerase, which are the stem cells and uh, the reproductive cells of the body. So, but as we talked about a little bit before, th those cells happen to have, luckily, relatively long telomeres. So if you hit them with this drug, they'll be able to uh, uh, go some time before there's any uh, deleterious effects because they have such a big buffer of telomeres in them. Uh, so it's, it's actually this, this form of uh, reprogramming of the uh, cells mm. is totally different than the approach that's used in, in chemistry or in pharmaceuticals that uh, use chemical compounds instead of uh, biologics. Uh, well, the reprogramming is uh, where you add DNA to a cell and uh, or a certain uh, piece of DNA that encodes a, a gene that is then produced in the cell. Whereas, you know, the, what we've been talking about with telomerase inhibitors, we're talking about small molecules. So, yeah, that's... Those are quite two different, two different. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, can you think of any other safety issues involved in uh, telomere therapy? Uh, uh, telomerase, telomerase cancer yeah, yeah. therapy. I don't think. Uh, you know, it's it's going to a lot of it's going to boil down to the nature of the small molecule as well. What kind of toxicological effects it's going to have? But you know, that'll come out in the the screening process and the toxicological tests. Okay, we're going to take this opportunity, take a break and thank our sponsors and identify our station. You're watching Boritz's Bio Briefings right here on Think Tech Hawaii. And our guest today is Professor Richard Alsop, specialist in telomere research and uh, giving us the reasons why we're going to live a lot longer, at least until tomorrow. <laughs> stay, at least stay with us till our uh, end of a station break. Hi, I'm David Day. I'm the host of Think Tech Asia. What we do is produce shows that have to do with international business, foreign policy, national security, and geopolitics. We run our shows on Thursday afternoons at 4 o'clock. I'll see you then. Aloha. I'm Maria Kashem of Think Tech Hawaii, and I want to tell you about our Think Tech talk shows. If you didn't know it, Think Tech streams video and audio for all of its shows live on the internet from 2 to 5 p.m. every weekday afternoon. And we replay them all night long on Ustream.tv. Visit ThinkTechHawaii.com for our live stream and YouTube links. Raise your awareness on Think Tech. I'm Maria Kashem, and I'll see you there. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel of Think Tech. We have some news for you. In addition to our Think Tech TV show and our Asia in Review show on Olelo 54, as of January 1st, we're adding Community Matters to play also two hours a week. Check out thinktechaway.com for the specific times of each of these shows. We hope you enjoy all three. Mahalo, I'm Jay Fidel. Welcome back. We've been watching you. We hope you'll continue watching us right here on Boards' Bio Briefings. We're talking about the telomeres and the telomeres. You know, I don't know why I keep saying telomeres, but it's telomeres and the uh, life extension, longevity, cancer treatments, all the good things that this uh, branch of science, molecular biology that's developed over the last, uh, how long would you say it's taken to, for it to come to fruition in terms of funding, in terms of interest, in terms of numbers of people involved? Well, yeah, telomeres were discovered in, uh 
uh, Drosophila and uh, maize corn about uh, 60, 80 years ago. And so then, you know, it, it, uh, it took some time before the actual enzyme telomerase was discovered. That was discovered in, uh, in the, the mid-80s by uh, Carol Greider and Liz Blackburn, who got the mm -hmm. Nobel Prize for, for that discovery. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't that until that enzyme was discovered that the whole field started taking off. So it's really since, been since about the mid-80s that it really started t taking off. I see. So, so actually, you consider that a fairly short time. It's a relatively short time. Si size oh, yeah. Research. oh, yeah. I know that people uh, hear a news story or they listen to a show like uh, ours today and the discussion about longevity and uh, telomeres, and they think that tomorrow there'll be a drug, there'll be a potion, a motion, or mm -hmm. a lotion mm -hmm. that will take care of things, but it just doesn't work that quickly. It doesn't, but you know. Um, it does and it doesn't. I mean, if you're talking about an FDA-regulated drug, there's a whole process and series of steps that have to be done rigorously, uh, monitored uh, process uh, with clinical trials and all this very expensive billion dollars later, 20 years, you have a drug. But if you have uh, an extract, which is a uh, like a, a natural product that people are already consuming that happens to have some, say, a the ability to activate telomerase in cell and stop the cell senescence that potentially could uh, be uh, much quicker to to the uh, to the uh, uh, consumer. Yeah, I want to interject something before we continue in the discussion yeah. of telomeres. One of the things that are done quite frequently outside the United States, where you don't have the same structure as the Food and Drug Administration in terms of approval of uh, chemically based pharmaceuticals is that you can, if you are a physician and you have an experimental uh, treatment uh, center or hospital or a cancer center, or something, you can try things that are not approved by the central agency, but things that are scientifically been proven to be effective and with the consent of patients coming to your specific facility who understand that they're being part of a clinical trial, mm -hmm. that, that you, these things are tried out uh, in situ and in vivo, actually in real life, mm -hmm. as opposed to going through the uh, process of six to eight years of drug development, testing, and so on. Mm. Uh, so uh, do you think that this, especially when it comes to uh, uh, molecules and when it comes to biologicals, do you think that this is a more realistic way of trying out things before they uh, seem to work or don't work over a period of uh, use? So we don't see the commercials on television. If you have suffered, uh, you know, death mm. or chronic illness due to taking Good this point. particular drug. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, as rigorous as the S FDA process is, there's always things that they can miss. They're so, you know, that's why it's so rigorous. They have several, two or three clinical trials that any uh, pharmacological agent has to get through in order to get it on the market. But even then, there are things that can be missed. So I think it, you pretty much have to do, certainly for a, for a drug, which has, which is, uh, you know, got a lot of potent activity, that you pretty much have to do that. Well, I think that when we are talking about the uh, standard chemical pharmaceuticals, mm. you're talking about proving to an agency, whether it's the FDA in the United States or any other control agency, mm. that a high percentage of people will benefit from that drug. Mm -hmm. Given the caveat that if you have this A, B, C, or D, you shouldn't take it. If you shouldn't contraindicate the drugs together with it, you shouldn't do it when you're asleep. You shouldn't do it when you're awake. You shouldn't do it when you're eating. Right. So there are all these caveats because you're mm -hmm. trying to get the highest percentage of effectiveness and lack of toxicity or contraindication right. uh, of the other drugs. Yeah. But when you're using, and the, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're using biologicals mm -hmm. or, or protein generated uh, solutions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you can almost have personalized medicine coming out of this type of philosophy possibly yes I think that there's a lot of promise there you know because it's uh, you're consuming biological like a, like a, something that's you know already commercially available but you know and by combining some of these biologicals you might have something that just happens to, to work really well in activating telomerase, preventing cell senescence. So yeah, I think there's a, there is a, a lot of potential there. So it's almost, you know, it's rather ironic. We're almost going back to an era pre-pharmaceutical industry 
mm -hmm. where, where grandma's lotions and potions mm -hmm. seemed to work. She didn't know why they were working, mm -hmm. but her mother and their grandmother told her that these work for particular ailments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter if they didn't work on the whole village. If they worked on your child or your parent or your uncle, mm -hmm. that was enough proof that they, th of what they needed. It wasn't really mm -hmm. important if you had the consensus. Mm -hmm. But maybe the historical in your family, the historical proof Mm -hmm. that something worked perhaps was uh, indicative of its uh, potency and effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Let me, let me go, go back if you don't mind. So if it's possible, uh, or is it possible, that uh, telomerase can lead to drug resistance? Telomerase lead to drug resistance? Uh, not itself. Are you talking about the, uh, the enzyme, the, yeah, the yeah. inhibitor? Yeah. Uh, could you get resistance to it? Yeah, you could get resistance to it. There's a uh, small number percentage of t t tumors that actually can replicate telomeres without telomerase. So it's possible that through chronic exposure of a patient to the telomerase inhibitor, uh, that may the cancer may initially regress, but you know, maybe some of those cells might activate this alternative pathway, as it's called, this alt mechanism of replicating telomeres. So that's always a worry, it's always a concern, but I mean, the question is, is how long and, and uh, how, could, is it gonna take years and years, decades, or is it gonna take months for this, for this to uh, 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 resistant mechanism to uh, show up? Uh, and is it dependent on the type of, of cancer. Uh, so uh, these are a lot of questions that we just don't need, know the so, answer to. So actually the, the tumors might become even more potent, as a I don't know. possibly no. in some people. Well, these telomerase negative tumors, interestingly, yeah. just they don't, they can't divide quite as well as the telomerase positive. Really? Because oh. that, that, that alternative mechanism is, is not as efficient as telomerase itself. So uh, the jury's still out on, on how uh, these resistant cells even if, even, the, the jury's still out on, even if they, they will arise. It's, uh, it, it's, it's just, it hasn't been uh, put to the test yet. Hold that thought. We're going to be right back. You're watching Boards' Bio Briefings right here at Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today, Professor Richard Alsop, specialist expert in telomeres. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia in Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day host for Asian Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Alalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. Aloha. We're back. We're watching you, and we hope you're watching us as well. Our special guest, Dr. Alsop, is here to discuss telomeres. And let me get right back to the subject. Since some, ca some cancers don't express telomeres, how are they maintaining their telomeres since they don't express uh, telomeres? They... This is all alternative pathway, so alt. So what it does is um, it actually is a mechanism where a telomere can sort of recombine with another telomere and sort of act as a template for um, uh, the uh, normal DNA replication machinery and other recombination proteins that to extend uh, a telomere. Uh, it's um, it's a much less efficient process, uh, and it doesn't uh, uh, occur all the time. It sort of occurs when a telomere gets uh, really short, it might get repaired. Sometimes the cell may not repair, and you might end up getting a lot of uh, a senescent cell, uh, whereas telomerase positive cells populations are generally the number of senescent cells in, in, in a telomerase positive cancer, say, are relatively small, but in a, an alt mechanism, you do get the odd cell that gets these critically short telomeres, because it's not super efficient, but it's, it's, a, re, it's, a, it's a DNA recombination uh, pathway. Have uh, any telomerase agents uh, been identified, therapeutic agents? <coughs> telomerase uh, inhibitor? Yeah. Uh, well, as, as, as I mentioned, Jaron Corporation in Menlo Park, California have um, a uh, 
uh, proprietary molecule that, they, that they've uh, discovered and published on. It actually uh, associates with the uh, RNA component of telomerase. So that's another essential component of this telomerase protein. So RNA, the telomerase RNA is actually what serves as a template to extend the ends of the end of the telomere. And this molecule that Geron Corporation has uh, uh, developed will block that uh, RNA component from functioning properly. What do you think is the next step in the research towards the treatment of cancer with uh, the whole telomere community? Uh, well, I think that, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're only just beginning now to sort of identify what some of these telomerase inhibitor compounds are. So I think that uh, as time goes on, I think people will naturally find better and better uh, inhibitors that, that are, are, are kind of, can uh, affect uh, tumor cells, but uh, it's going to be a gradual process. It took Geron uh, Comp Corporation um, over 20 years to develop their uh, inhibitor. So, uh, but, uh, you know, new t technology is always changing, always developing, uh, you know, the next one could be around the corner. So you think that detection of uh, telomerase activity will be useful in cancer diagnosis? Um, yeah, it could be. It could be, uh, uh, as could telomere length, uh, the length of telomeres. If you have uh, uh, cells which are, as I said, tumor cells are relatively, have relatively short telomeres. If you have cells in your body which are abnormally short, it could be an indication that uh, telomerase is, is active. Um, but uh, the enzyme also could be uh, tested for. There's a, an assay where you can actually uh, measure, you can extract, make an extract from the cell and mix it with a uh, substrate of telomerase and it, it'll, it'll fluoresce. If it's uh, extended, you can amplify it and then uh, if it amplifies, it'll fluoresce and then you can detect it. And uh, so that's, that's one method to detect uh, telomerase. Uh, uh, in cells, and it could be it theoretically could be used to screen for uh, 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 higher levels of telomerase or spikes in telomerase that could be associated with, with uh, possibly. I think this would have to be done in conjunction with other tests that are out there for uh, cancer diagnosis. But, so, yeah. how long do you think it will be before uh, telomerase can have a significant uh, medical impact, such as cancer screening or telomerase therapy? Mm. Yeah, I think uh, cancer screening might, might come a little bit sooner, maybe uh, oh, maybe five years. Uh, ca cancer treatment uh, could be um, yeah, maybe anywhere in the range of five to ten years. It's hard to say, though. Um, uh, it's hard to put specific numbers on, 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 on these uh, uh, kinds of uh, uh, predictions, but uh, that's sort of some optimistic uh, time frames. Well, you know, there's a, uh, I'm sure that you haven't been living on Mars in the last year, and so you know about the whole uh, brouhaha regarding the uh, doping in the uh, Lance Armstrong case and mm. the whole bicycling team, and in and, and effect, the whole uh, sport of uh, professional bicycling. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not so curious about finding out if doping is finding out. I'm actually curious to see if all that doping is actually part of the process. Maybe it has an effect on the telomeres themselves, uh, rejuvenating the ability of the athlete to uh, perform, so to speak, at the superior levels. Yeah, well, who knows? <laughs> it could, uh, you know, like growth hormone, these sorts of things. I, I, I honestly don't know uh, if it does or if it doesn't. Uh, I'm not sure if it's been tested. Um, uh, but uh, there's no... Well, I'm thinking more in terms yeah. of, of diagnosing the potential of an athlete. You know, we have all these... America is very crazy about sports, professional yeah. football, uh -huh. uh, basketball. I think there was just now some kind of a basketball championship. Everybody right. was betting money, a billion dollars mm -hmm. against... Uh, uh, right. To see if they could come up with the final uh, winners mm. of the basketball thing. <laughs> so do you think that uh, telomerase has the potential for identifying the super athletes of the future? 
I think it definitely has the potential. Uh, I mean, I think one of the things that hasn't been looked at and would be really exciting to look at is genetic variants of the telomerase gene, which may lead to, for example, a more active telomerase or a uh, more stable telomerase kind of, kind of uh, uh, scenario, which uh, very well may be out there, but waiting to be discovered. And if there's people that have these protective sort of pro- anti-aging, pro-longevity effects of telomerase, then it could have some uh, 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 indication that uh, this person over here who has it may, may have a little bit advantage. So just as a final question, what do we need to do, how to move faster pace forward uh, so we can address many of the unanswered questions, for instance, in aging research? Well. Um, uh, I, I think that what we just talked about actually is very interesting. The, the discovery of variants of telomerase that may be more, uh, more potent. I think the uh, development of uh, anti or telomerase activators to activate t uh, telomerase in a, in a safe setting to, through you know, these biological uh, medicines that we were talking about, I think, uh, and uh, cosmeceuticals and things. and. Nutraceuticals are, are, are have hold a lot of potential, so you know I think. But also, you know, all of this takes money. So uh, money, the more you know, and uh, and interest, and people, manpower. I think uh, you can really accelerate the process. I want to thank our special guest today, Professor Richard Alsop from the uh, John A. Byrd School of Medicine at the University of Hawaii. And we've had a really re mind-blowing, revealing discussion on telomeres and telomerase. And uh, I want to thank also uh, Professor Alsop for being here. And I also would like to thank the staff right here at Think Tech Hawaii that week after week, day after day, puts on the programs that you're watching. Special thanks go out to our producer, Jay Fidel, who's put the whole shebang together. You've been watching Boyd's Bio Briefings right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Until next week, remember, you're hot, we're not.